I grew up in sunny Buffalo, New York, where the gardening season is short, and I really, I didn't have a lot of experience. I, you know, grew up in apartments. When I came to Kozan, I didn't know anything. I'd never harvested anything in my life. You know, the very first step to teach a class I really think has to start with uh, planning, like you would do with anything. The lessons are on our, our shared Google Drive. And so at our school, it's very easy. When I log into my shared drive, it says Cosine Garden. And then I would go to Green Our Planet's lesson plan, and the lesson is right there with the materials. So Green Our Planet has our curriculum by grade. Then it, it lays out your, your initial sponge activity, your hook. How are you getting the kids involved? What is your uh, lesson objective? What standard? What do you want the kids to, to learn? And I think for, for me, what Green Air Planet was able to give me with their curriculum is it doesn't just give me science standards. It gives me, here's your, here's your reading or writing standard. Here it is right here, there's the standard. You don't have to go look for it. You don't have to say, and often I've seen other programs where here's this cool thing, now go find a standard that connects to it. No, Green Air Planet actually takes your math standards and gives you math lessons and gives you activities that connect directly to what your each grade is, has. From there, uh, find something that interests you, that you'll find the more you're interested in it, the more power you'll teach it. If you love it and believe it, the kids will too. So start with just one thing to connect with. So the next step would be to create an outline that would have um, my standards, it would have my student objectives, it would have my materials that I need, it would have my assessment component, did the students understand what I'm trying to teach them, and, and any materials that I would need. So that's pretty much what my outline would have, a basic five steps, what do I need to make this lesson successful so then I can move forward. There's some books, possibly, that you need with the lessons. So for myself, I reach out to my school librarian and said, hey, do we have any of these books? Yes, we have them all. Or I can reach out to my principal. Or Green Art Planets, we've got extra copies of whatever you need. So I think when it comes to materials, what you need in each lesson is scripted. It's, it's right there for you. So there's no, what am I gonna do? And so many of the lessons are already ready. There's nothing you need to go to Walmart and buy 25 things to try to make the lesson, which with some of these science curriculums, that's the problem. I actually think it's more inspiring to let the garden talk in the sense that after I get my outline, after I get my materials, the next step is I'll walk out to the garden, I'll walk through the lesson in my head. Well, right now we need to start planting, so let's talk about how do we plant seeds? What do we need, what do seeds need to grow? That lesson, then I would go to Grand Our Planet's lesson plan, and the lesson is right there with the materials. It tells you what to do, and now I'm doing it. I would feel like I would have all the tools to be successful. My other uh, bit of advice for someone who's maybe very nervous would be, look at the Virtual Academy. The lessons are already there. You don't have to go on YouTube and hope to find what you're looking for. Here's Farmer Joe explaining how to, to do this explicitly. It's, it's there for you. Someone's teaching the lesson. I can watch Farmer Joe teach me about insects, and in the year I can play that for the kids and he can teach or I can replicate what he teaches. That's that amazing thing as a teacher, watching someone teach it gave me the confidence to say, I'm gonna make it work. All insects have legs, just like us, but they have a certain number of legs. All insects have six legs. That's how you can tell if an animal is an insect. It has a head, it has a thorax, and it has an abdomen and six legs. That's how you can tell it's an insect. Now, one more funny thing about insects is that all insects have their skeletons on the outside of the body. See, we have our bones on the inside of our bodies, and insects have their bones on the outside. That's why they're crunchy when you step on them. Let's just take like the seeds lesson that I, I'm, I'm gonna do. Uh, it's a lesson I actually saw, uh, it was Farmer Danielle do with the kids. So I actually got to watch. Now that we know how plants grow, right? I have some questions for you guys. Since we're going to be planting seeds today, there's a certain way that we should plant our seeds to make sure that they grow. And so I, I felt like I can do this. I can, I can replicate this. What does that mean? The seeds, the, the, the spurs, the seeds like that plants the spurs seed so they can go across. Watching a farmer in our garden in the same environment that I was in do the same lesson was an amazing thing. There's a lot of supports that are within Green Our Planet. And the first support is we have our coordinator. We have a, a once a month meeting, sitting down with someone with objectives, with ideas, with resources, with uh, either 
um, when a class is being offered or something that there's an opportunity. From there, you get a farmer that comes out every week to your school that not only teaches classes, but is also there for a resource. The support is there. And then as we move forward, we have our, our garden team. At our school, we have seven teachers to talk about what we're going to focus on. Let's see. They're not super sweet. Oh, I can barely see. So when I teach the class, I usually, again, start with what are we learning? Why are we learning this? The seeds must disperse either by wind or by plant helping or by animal. It's how seeds spread. And then I let them uh, discuss. And then from there, it's mostly hands-on. I really believe that 90% of what we do with this, these opportunities need to be hands-on. What is the end of this lettuce plant? And then look at this one. Seeds. That is seed dispersal. They'll have their science journal where again, they're maybe drawing a picture, maybe writing a sentence, maybe doing something to connect to something. The real life examples that the garden offers makes it uh, an amazing journey. I don't, I don't have behavior issues. I don't have um, anything but smiles and happiness. And at the end, we come back and an assessment piece for me might be a simple thumbs up and thumbs down. It could be a Google form. It could be a simple uh, write in your garden journal, like give me a sentence of something you saw, something you learned, uh, maybe restating the objective of what we were trying to accomplish today. And each age is different. That's the joy of it. Like from kinder to fifth, there's a lot of different opportunities to do a lot of different things. There's lots of classes that Greener Planets offers. Take one class, give up one afternoon. And then as we move forward, we have our, our garden team. At our school, we have seven teachers that they we meet with kids every other week and we have garden club. We meet once a week and have a meeting and talk about what we're going to focus on. And it, it that support from a coordinator that they're there once a month. Then you have someone once a week and then you have someone in your building every day to, to let you step off that ledge and try. Your school has a garden team. Join it. Come out with the kids. You don't have to be the leader, you can just be the person that watches. So within those two things, you can either take a class and learn or experience it firsthand. The curriculum is there for you, the people are there for you. Hands-on, there's videos, there's tutorials. All the tools you need to be successful are there. Oh, a ladybug! Where? Right there, you see it?